Okay, today's topic is going to be about appendicitis and this falls under the pediatric playlist. Um, so it's going to be more focused on the appendicitis that um, occurs during uh, childhood. So pediatric appendicitis. So firstly, we're going to start with the pathology. It's not very high yield, but and the pathology is quite self-explanatory. So with pathology, it occurs more in males than in females. The peak is during your 20s, but it does occur in childhood as well. The main pathology of appendicitis is that there is luminal obstruction. This can either be due to a fecolith or a tumor. So here I try to draw a picture of the appendix and the appendix lumen being obstructed by a fecolith or a tumor. And here is the appendix, right? So with the obstruction, there is increased intramural pressure, which then compromises the blood flow to the area that further leads to ischemia. Um, there could be bacterial proliferation, especially if this is a fecolith, there's bacteria trapped inside here and they proliferate. Lastly, there could be ischemia and inflammatory responses that leads to edema and um, neutrophilic infiltration, which further leads to necrosis and rupture, and that would cause a peritonitis or a septic shock. So for a clinical presentation, the appendicitis that presents in younger children are slightly different from when they present in adulthood, and um, also slightly different when it is in a child below five years of age, a child between five to 12 years of age, and then 12 years or older, okay? But very similar. So let's start with um, a child that is less than five years old. They would usually present with fever, diffuse tenderness, rebound, guarding, vomiting, anorexia. Okay, so anorexia refers to decreased appetite. And between five to 12 years of age, they have abdominal pain, vomiting. They can sometimes localize to the right lower quadrant. That's where the tenderness is most prominent, as well as anorexia. And above 12 years of age, they have fever, anorexia, and then they can tell you that it was first a periumbilical pain, which then localized to the right lower quadrant. So they present much more like that of an adult appendicitis. So in pediatrics, um, appendicitis usually commonly presents with a perforated appendicitis with peritonitis, whereas in your adult population, Perforation is not that common, it is usually a complication, whereas in children they usually do present with appendicitis, peritonitis, and a perforation. Okay. And importantly, they usually have pain before the vomiting develops. Right, so the, re the main difference here is that they usually have generally the same symptoms, but in less than five years of age, they're not really able to tell you where the pain specifically is, so therefore they have diffuse tenderness. Whereas in the five to 12 year old group, they can sometimes localize the pain to the right lower quadrant. And you can ask them to indicate with one finger only where the most pain is, okay? And in children above 12 years of age, they are usually able to tell you that it is first a peri-umbilical pain that migrated to the right lower quadrant. Moving on, uh, but still on the clinical presentation, but more of a physical examination, McBurney's point and Rolfsing sign are very high yield. So they like to ask this question a lot. In McBurney's point, that is the point where they're usually um, the most tender, that is the right lower quadrant. They have rebound tenderness, and it is a periumbilical pain that has then migrated to the right lower quadrant. Okay, these three points, high yield. Next is your Rolfsing sign. So Rolfsing sign is almost um, the opposite of McBurney's point. So you palpate in the left lower quadrant and then that elicits tenderness and pain in the right lower quadrant. Okay, so here yeah, palpate left lower quadrant and then it causes right lower quadrant pain. The other two signs are used 
to uh, screen for or diagnose appendicitis, but it's not as commonly used as McBurney's points as well as Rolfsing sign. So the psoas sign is when you hyperextend the right hip, okay, and that causes right lower quadrant pain. The obturator sign is, so the psoas sign is actually more um, used when you suspect a retral sequel appendix. So the position of the appendix differs from the normal anatomy and position, and then you would use the psoas sign. Okay, but personally, I haven't seen this in any of our notes. Um, I got this indications for the psoas sign and the obturator sign from the USMLE um, recommendations. Okay, so that is the psoas sign. Next and lastly is the obturator sign. So what you want to do here is to passively rotate the right hip internally, okay? And that will cause a right lower quadrant pain. Okay, so those are the signs as well as the locations that we need to know. And um, one last thing on the clinical presentation or your physical examinations, there is an, a nice acronym known as MANTRALS and that is a scoring system to tell you whether what you're dealing with is appendicitis or not. Okay, so um, I forgot the exact points per um, criterion on the scoring system. I suggest you give that a look up because it is quite high yield. It will um, definitely be asked in quite a few of the exams. Uh, important. Okay, so firstly, the acronym is MANTRALS. M is for migration. So that is migration of the periumbilical pain to the right lower quadrant. The next is A. A is for anorexia, so decrease in appetite. N for nausea. T for tenderness. Remember diffuse tenderness in your young populations and then later the right lower quadrant tenderness. R rebound tenderness, important as well. Rebound tenderness usually signifies peritonitis. And E is for elevated temperature, they usually have a fever. L for leukocytosis, that you will see on your CBC or labs. And then S is for shift, so they have a left shift, um, not too high yield over here. Left shift is it's more for internal medicine purposes, but there is a shift to a lymphocytic predominance. So there is more lymphocytes than there are um, neutrophils. So, if the score, the total of these scores added together. Okay, so if the total of this mantral score is 7 or above, that would confirm your diagnosis for appendicitis. And if it is at 4 or more, but not at 7, that is a possible diagnosis of appendicitis. Okay. So next, we can do our labs. Um, usually appendicitis is a clinical diagnosis, but if you want to do or take labs for a baseline laboratory readings or just to confirm whether this is an appendicitis that is also um, doable. So for labs, you would see an increase in white cell count, an increase in neutrophils, as well as an increase in CRP or your C-reactive proteins that indicates an inflammatory response. So you can also do a urine analysis or you should also do a urine analysis. It's not so much to diagnose appendicitis, but more so to exclude your pyelonephritis. Okay, so what you should see on urine analysis is a sterile pleocytosis. So you want to exclude any UTI that is happening down here. Next, um, you would want to exclude an ectopic pregnancy. So because they also present very similarly um, in all female adolescent or teenage girls or um, any female patients within the reproductive age, you should take a pregnancy test because that is often missed okay, for your ectopic pregnancy. And lastly, before treatment, your diagnostic imaging. Okay. You can do a diagnostic imaging. Um, for that, ultrasound would be the gold standard. And in pediatrics, you would notice a trend that 
they prefer to use ultrasound rather than CT and MRI to decrease the radio risk, the risk of being exposed to a lot of radiation. Okay, and lastly, we have treatment. So now that we know that it is appendicitis, we can treat it. Firstly, you can go for surgical removal. Um, so in this, this is from the lecturer lectures and the USMLE right um, as guideline. So they don't give an option for antibiotic treatment, but that should be an option as well under treatment, uh, especially in your low resource settings where surgical removal is not is not um, feasible for either the hospital or the patient. So there could be an option for treatment as an antibiotic treatment. Okay, so there's also surgical removal, narcotic pain medication, IV fluids, and rehydration. Okay. And in there as well, your antibiotic treatment. Okay. Okay, and that is it for appendicitis. Um, a quick review of appendicitis or summary. Clinical presentation, fever, tenderness, rebound, guarding, vomiting, anorexia. In children, they usually present with a perforated appendicitis with peritonitis. Okay, um, so in children, maybe this the surgical removal would be the best option here. And um, important McBurney's point, which is quite high yield, rough sing sign, the other two signs, not that important. Complications, they could be perforation, thrombophlebitis, liver abscess, and bacteremia. Remember the Mantrals um, acronym, if seven or above, that is a diagnosis. With your labs, you basically take labs to... Uh, for your levels of white cells, neutrophils, and CRPs. With urine analysis to exclude your pyelonephritis and your pregnancy test to exclude an ectopic. Treatment, surgical removal, a course of antibiotics, pain control, IV fluids, and rehydration. Okay, so if the total of this mantral score is 7 or above, that would confirm your diagnosis for appendicitis. And if it is at four or more, but not at seven, that is a possible diagnosis of appendicitis. Okay. So next we can do our labs. Um, usually appendicitis is a clinical diagnosis, but if you want to do or take labs for a baseline laboratory readings, or just to confirm whether this is an appendicitis that is also um, doable. So for labs, you would see an increase in white cell count, an increase in neutrophils, as well as an increase in CRP or your C-reactive proteins that indicates an inflammatory response. So you can also do a urine analysis or you should also do a urine analysis. It's not so much to diagnose appendicitis, but more so to exclude your pyelonephritis. Okay, so what you should see on urine analysis is a sterile pleocytosis. So you want to exclude any UTI that is happening down here. Next, um, you would want to exclude an ectopic pregnancy. So because they also present very similarly um, in all female adolescent or teenage girls or um, any female patients within the reproductive age, you should take a pregnancy test because that is often missed okay, for your ectopic pregnancy. And lastly, before treatment, your diagnostic imaging. Okay, You can do a diagnostic imaging. Um, for that, ultrasound would be the gold standard. And in pediatrics, you would notice a trend that they prefer to use ultrasound rather than CT and MRI to decrease the radio risk, the risk of being exposed to a lot of radiation. Okay, and lastly, we have treatment. So now that we know that it is appendicitis, we can treat it. Firstly, you can go for surgical removal. Um, so 
in this, this is from the lecturer lectures and the USMLE right um, as guideline. So they don't give an option for antibiotic treatment, but that should be an option as well under treatment, uh, especially in your low resource settings where surgical removal is not is not um, feasible for either the hospital or the patient. So there could be an option for treatment as an antibiotic treatment. Okay. So there's also surgical removal, narcotic pain medication, IV fluids, and rehydration. Okay. And in there as well, your antibiotic treatment. And that is it for appendicitis. Um, a quick review of appendicitis or summary. Clinical presentation, fever, tenderness, rebound, guarding, vomiting, anorexia. In children, they usually present with a perforated appendicitis with peritonitis. Okay, um, so in children, maybe this the surgical removal would be the best option here. And um, important, McBurney's point, which is quite high yield, Rothsing sign, the other two signs, not that important. Complications, they could be perforation, thrombophlebitis, liver abscess, and bacteremia. Remember the mantrals um, acronym, if seven or above, that is a diagnosis. With your labs, you basically take labs to uh, for your levels of white cells, neutrophils, and CRPs. With urine analysis, to exclude your pyelonephritis and your pregnancy test to exclude an ectopic. Treatment, surgical removal, a course of antibiotics, pain control, IV fluids, and rehydration.